Online CSS. I'm just wondering if you might be able to share with us um, some of what you've been talking to others here today in Ottawa and um, how the discussions have gone in general. I know you probably can't be too specific, but if you could share with us and if there's any you know points that are particularly powerful with some of those that you've met um, today or spoken with in your advocacy here in Canada. You know, there's such strong support here in Canada from the beginning um, of the Global Fund, and I think there is right rightly pride in having been one of the first countries to be engaged with the fund and having hosted one of the first meetings. Um, um, but there's such strong support here at CETA. The, we had a very good meeting with the minister. Um, we, we didn't talk specifics. We didn't talk about you know what a dollar amount would be or, or when it would be contributed. We talked about what the opportunity is, the long-standing partner with, partnership with Canada. Not just financially, but you know their their role in governance on the board um, from the beginning, um, and I'm very active in the last 18 months. Um, you know, with the seat now that it's just Canada and Switzerland, um, and also the partnership with CETA, the technical partnership. We talked a lot more than I went through about the platform opportunities and the, what can be done with the new funding model. Um, so that we're not in a round system anymore, which is very difficult for country ownership. It's very difficult to align with national health strategies in a round system, uh, rather than rolling all that together and allowing countries to come in at a time that's right. So then you have visibility into that uh, for broader health systems, for maternal neonatal child health. Um, and that's there's real opportunity there. So we talked a little bit more about that than, I, than I've covered. Um, we talked a little bit about where other donors are, the fact that the U.S. posted such a high number, um, that the U.K. has publicly <laughs> said their goal is to at least, or up to, depending on how you ask, double their contribution, um, that the Netherlands, despite a 25% cut, is looking to at least stay, be stable, if not go up. Um, the fact that Switzerland just gave a 40% increase. Uh, the EC hosted the, the, the replenishment conference and was talking about uh, opportunities. Um, Germany's already, you know, at, at, a, at a floor, uh, given a multi-year commitment at its current level. So the fact that other, there's enough excitement that people are, even in a tough financial times, that the peers are uh, looking for opportunities to increase, I think is, a, is an important message, uh, especially since Canada's in that, you know, kind of elite group of early and strong, uh, long-time supporters of the fund. So I think that resonates, but but really the the opportunity for uh, and the opportunity cost of not acting now I think is the most important argument it has been everywhere. Um, um, people are looking even in tough financial times. People are looking for sound investments that will have a good ret strong return. Um, you know, the Canadian people are fundamentally generous people that if you explain the opportunity, we have little doubt that they'll uh, recognize it and we have to help make that case. It's a lot more useful coming from non-government people. Um, uh, and that is, uh, you know, we could not, yet yeah, we could not in these financial times be asking for more money to do the same thing we've been doing over the last three years with no sense of what is, where can we go from here. And the combination of the historic opportunity and the increased contributions from countries themselves, which is part of the pillar, one of the pillars of our replenishment. Uh, we have talked about how we're not just coming to ODA this time, we're looking to countries to increase their contributions, we're looking to the BRICS and G20s to at least co-invest with us, we're looking to the private sector, including high net worth individuals and public-private partnerships, that's a collective effort to achieve that common vision, that that's probably the most powerful thing. Um, and then there's the politics of your peers, and but it, the compelling vision is what what um, what I think is resonating, and also the reforms of the fund. I mean that um, you know a lot of governments support a lot of multilateral institutions, and there aren't you know the fact that we have changed so dramatically to be even more focused on impact to really emphasize how human rights contributes to the impact and how the impact will contribute to human rights. Uh, these are very compelling narratives, I think, for most for most people. I think, particularly in Canada, that has led on a lot of these issues anyway. The last thing is, and this is this is something that occurs any in any country that is multilateral and bilateral, is you know what's the right mix of multilateral and bilateral, and the fact that you really can achieve what we're talking about through a bilateral. I mean, I ran a large bilateral, six and a half billion dollars a year. 
there's no way that that, you know, for one disease, there's no way that that could achieve the objective we're talking about. It's only through a collective approach. It's only through a leveraged approach across those multiple pillars and uh, in support of a global effort that we're going to achieve this. No bilateral can do that. If I could just, um, yeah, if I could just add um, one of the other issues that, that came up, uh, both um, in our meetings today, Katie, and also last time, was the question of visibility and Canada and visibility of Canada's support uh, and the role of the Global Fund. Um, and basically, there were a number of areas that we touched on on that. Um, one of which, of course, is engagement with parliamentarians. Um, we are working with the HIV AIDS Tuberculosis Caucus uh, at the, uh, the House of Commons, uh, co-chaired by Libby Davies, uh, Joe Daniel, and uh, Judy Foote from the three different parties. Um, there's also a Malaria Caucus, which is co-chaired by Senator Mobina Jaffer uh, and Patrick Brown from the Conservative uh, Party, which has been fairly quiet lately, but uh, I met with them last time I was here and they indicated that they are prepared to, to ramp up. Um, we will be um, appearing, Christoph Ben will be back um, probably in this room actually at the Foreign Affairs Committee um, at the beginning of next month uh, to engage with members of the, uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee as well to make sure that we've got that strong um, all-party support uh, at, the, um, at the House of Commons. Uh, as well, um, uh, obviously one of the most powerful mechanisms is, um, is actually taking members of Parliament to see the impact of resources on the ground in country and results has been a terrific partner in that um, had a, a recent visit to Malawi there have been visits to Ethiopia in the past and we look forward to continued collaboration with uh, with results in that it's been it's been really really uh, positive um, we've put together some some new um, uh, brochures which I'll circulate here we don't have a lot of them but um, I've got a, a few of them here that we'll leave behind and we'll make sure that uh, when we come back in June we've got we've got lots more uh, Le Canada et le Fonds Mondial, uh, Canada and the Global Fund. Uh, and also we put together some text and photos for MPs householders. Um, and we've already had about half a dozen MPs that have agreed to uh, incorporate uh, that text, which again is just more visibility in terms of the important role that Canada is playing uh, with the Global Fund. So those were some of the things that were well received by both CETA and by the Minister in terms of um, how we can tell our story more effectively in Canada. <coughs> Grandmothers Advocacy Network over the next couple of months, we will be talking with MPs, our MPs all across the country. And we're trying to really refine what are our key messages. So, both of you, Sven and Mark, and others in the room too, if you had three key messages, what would they be? On the three messages, I don't think it's very complicated. It's historic opportunity and opportunity cost of not acting today, um, which is a, an incredibly important message. And that includes the human rights uh, opportunity. Um, uh, it's, uh, you know, relative to that opportunity cost, it's pay now or pay forever. I mean, we, this historic, this window is not going to stay open long. And, you know, as a policymaker, do you want to be known as the, pers as the policymakers that ended these plagues or bequeath them to, the, to your grandchildren? Uh, and collective action is the only way to solve this issue, and we need everyone at the table including our responsibility on increasing domestic contributions. <clears throat> we're not asking you to do this forever, we're asking you to do it now. Um, and um, um, to me, those are the, that's, what, that's what has resonated most. Um, now, how you couch the last one depends. Each country is different in terms of, is private sector more important? Is domestic contribution more important? Are local companies more important? You only know, you're the only ones who are gonna know the context for how you nuance those points for your audiences and, and the people you're talking to. It's different country by country. We ask and have asked the members here, um, have people here, what do you need to make this case? You know, what do you need for these, do you, what data do you need? What's going to resonate most? And then we'll try to get it. That's part of our responsibility. Um, and we want to work with all of you on that. Um, um, you know, one thing that is clear is that underlying all those is what's, what does the taxpayer in that country get? Or what are we doing? What's Canada doing to, to, to relate to all of that? Um, it, it, those messages have to be refined based on each country you're in. The general messaging doesn't work. It really has to then be, be honed to the local environment, and in particular how it, how it relates to ca Canadians, um, uh, just like it has to be in for Germany and the UK and the US. But, I think the overarching messages are there. The question is how we um, do it. Now, um, 
you you would have to decide if the changes in the global fund and the global fund is is now the partnership we need it to be um, to achieve these goals. That's a different message in each place too. You know how important are the reforms? How important is the stuff related to 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 some of the things that have occurred over the last couple of years? It seems to be very important here. So the, the evolution in the fund, the fact that it's this instrument that was created to be different and is, in fact, a learning organization seems to be important here. Um, but again, I think you need to take those big messages and nuance them, and we'd be happy to help in any way we can. Um, Sven and others. Just, I would just add one, one message, and, and it won't surprise you that I would add this one, but it's that politics matters. Um, and to take it seriously and to engage politically. And I don't have to tell grandmothers, I mean, you did an amazing job around access to medicines and that, that bill, which tragically uh, we, we lost. But politics matters, and the people that are making decisions matter. Uh, and so to engage in, in, in the political process and to make sure you meet with elected representatives, uh, that they hear um, what you have to say and that uh, your agenda is clear, the, the points that, that, that Mark makes. Because, I mean, they'll tell you, look, you know, I'm not getting any feedback in my constituency on these issues. So, you know, if they're not hearing from you, um, they'll move on to, to other issues. If they are hearing from you, uh, and there's nothing that really focuses a politician's mind more than, you know, a constituent coming in saying, look, I live in your constituency, I've got 11 brothers and sisters, um, and we all vote. Uh, so it's, I think it's really important that you do engage. Um, and I, I, I just, I'm reminded of the, the words of Jack Layton, a dear friend and a great leader who, um, he said, he used, his mantra used to be, you know, don't let them tell you it can't be done, right? Um, it can be done. Um, and we've seen that through all of the organizations around this table, that um, by that kind of dedication, commitment, and engagement politically, that you can make a difference. So the messaging is incredibly important, but also engaging with the people that actually have the power to make the decisions, you know, the people that have decided to cut ODA, the people that have decided, uh, have made other decisions. I mean, those are, those are political decisions that you should be involved with.